So I'm uh, Chris Mackinson. I'm an assistant professor at Columbia University in the Institute for Genomic Medicine. And my lab is focused on understanding really the genetic and neural circuit basis of um, developmental disorders such as epilepsy. Could you please describe your laboratory's main research focus, biggest achievements? Uh, we have a number of projects that are focused on um, ion channels and neurotransmitter receptor mutations that cause, you know, really severe disruptions to kind of the early phases of um, brain circuit development. And those, you know, early um, issues uh, show up as seizure later in life and, um, and also cognitive impairment and neuropsychiatric conditions such as schizophrenia and autism and things like that. Um, so really what we're doing is trying to, you know, understand, you know, how these different um, mutations disrupt the circuit um, activity uh, leading to those clinical phenotypes. And, um, to do that, we have uh, mouse models that carry mutations that are clinically relevant um, in the corresponding position in the mouse genome. And then we also take human stem cells and derive from those stem cells uh, neurons that we actually grow in, this, in these 3D um, tissue structures called um, brain organoids. Why did you choose a femtonics multiphoto microscope to perform your experiments with? It has a, um, a large enough uh, um, field or volume, I should say, uh, that we can fit most of a brain organoid in or much of uh, the circuits within a, a, a mouse brain that we're interested in. So it gives us kind of the scale of imaging that we needed. Um, and it also gives us the speed that we needed. The, uh, the AOD really is, in, in my view, is a big advantage over traditional Galbo-based uh, 2P systems. Um, and so those two, those two features were, were really the main reason why we went with the 3D Atlas. What are your first impressions of the Femto 3D Atlas microscope? We're using it to um, to look at circuit activity, so that is many different neurons at the same time. Um, and for those applications, we really take advantage of the large sort of imaging um, volume, so we can get lots of different cells that are really spread out within the network, and we can image them basically simultaneously using um, calcium uh, indicators as a signal. But we're also interested in um, understanding how cells receive inputs and process those inputs and translate that into outputs. And that's really more of a single cell kind of question. And for that, we use voltage in indicators, which are much faster um, and, and have much lower signal to noise. So for those experiments, we're really zooming in on a very specific part of the cell and then imaging at a very high rate. So, you know, the 3D Atlas has the flexibility to do both of those, uh, both of those different kinds of experiments. One, lots of cells distributed across a huge area, and then the other, really high frequency um, imaging of uh, very precise locations in, within a single cell. What made you choose the Femto 3D Atlas microscope's diacro configuration, which is equipped with two laser beams, as opposed to conventional 2P microscopes. Yeah, so we're using the two, uh, the two lasers for um, two separate applications. So as I had mentioned before, we're really interested in understanding how cells receive inputs and translate that into outputs. And one way that you can experimentally look at that is by uncaging um, different compounds, um, such as uh, glutamate or GABA, that neurons will respond to, you know, locally at different positions within the cell. And so you can, with one laser, image the activity of the cell, and with the other laser, you can uncage to activate the cell in very precise locations. So that's one um, uh, application. Uh, the other application is, is to activate cells by expressing a, a light-sensitive channel um, called channerodopsin, and um, you can use one laser to activate the channerodopsin to 
get a cell to, um, to signal to fire an action potential while imaging then various cells that that cell might be connected to. And so in this way, you can start to reconstruct how neural networks are, um, uh, are assembled um, by activating target cells that have channel rhodopsin in them while then measuring the activity that results from that activation in, um, in other cells. And to do that, you really need um, uh, two lasers. What were the three most helpful microscope features for you and your team during your research? So the AOD um, is really critical. It lets us do random access imaging. So we're not constrained to you know, boxes or lines like you would be with a, a mirror-based system. Whatever the, you know, the shape of the cell or the, um, or, or the structure that we're interested in imaging, we can, um, we can uh, build an imaging profile or pattern that fits that, um, that shape perfectly. So that's really one of, the, one of the main advantages of the system. The other is that the, um, uh, the field of view is, um, that we have is rather large, especially for among the AOD systems. It kind of is in between maybe a traditional two system and a mesoscope. And so that gives us some capabilities that are in both of those um, in both of those worlds. So we have high resolution imaging capability, but we also have a large enough field of view that we can capture um, a, a, a sizable chunk of the um, networks that we're interested in, in studying. And I guess a third uh, aspect that, that we use um, a lot is the integrated electrophysiology. So um, my lab, when we're not imaging cells, we're recording from them using various sort of traditional approaches. So we have multi-electrode arrays and we have whole cell um, patch clamp electrophysiology going. And we've been able, been able to integrate those measurements um, very easily actually with the imaging. And so in combination with whole cell patch clamp physiology, um, the functional imaging we're doing with the, the 3D atlas is um, really powerful in my view. What is the strongest benefit of the fem to 3 d Atlas dichrome microscope? One of the major advantages of the system that we have is that there's a, an integrated beam conditioning unit. And so um, with many 2P systems, alignment and realignment and re-re-realignment is a big part of what you spend your time uh, doing in order to get you know, really consistent, high-quality imaging data. And um, uh, Femtonics is, um, has automated a lot of that process with their uh, beam conditioning unit, which receives the, the laser beam and then makes adjustments in real time so that the output from that unit is, um, is spot on and reproducible um, each day. So that really has helped us speed up the you know, really the speed in which we can um, get going each morning and that's translated into more uh, experiments that we've completed and more um, results. What was your experience with the Femtonic service team during the installation? So we had a team uh, come in and help us build the, uh, and assemble really the uh, microscope in my lab. And during that time, several members of my lab were there to you know, really watch the process and help out when they could. And, um, you know, that was really nice for us because there, there's, you know, with, with a, um, a commercial system, uh, there, there are a lot of black boxes potentially, right? There are a lot of things that, uh, that, you, that, that will work, but you may not know exactly why or how they work as, as opposed to, say, a system that you build yourself from scratch, which is what a lot of people do with systems. Uh, and so being there for the week, you know, building the system with the technicians was really helpful for us to understand, you know, the various pieces and parts that, um, uh, that make up the system, such as the beam conditioning unit or the, uh, or, or the AODs. What was your experience with the application specialist training? The system is 
um, on the imaging side is extremely flexible, and that also means that it, it can be um, much more complex than a lot of other systems. And so having the application specialist there for a week to work with us on our experiments and our applications was really was really key, and it helped us get going you know, using some of the more advanced features of the system, I think, much more quickly than we would have been able to do otherwise. And as we've worked with the system since then, other questions have come up if we, as we've wanted to integrate other capabilities and things that didn't come up during that first week, and the application specialists have been really responsive over phone and Zoom and things like that to make sure we were able to get our, uh, our questions answered. I think having uh, someone on call who is very familiar with the system and he uses very similar indicators and so forth uh, to walk through the issues that you're having is, is incredibly helpful. So they can, they can um, help you rule out uh, possibilities and things um, much more quickly than we'd be able to do, I think, without that help. In what way is the system helping your work that you could not achieve with other systems? So I think one of the one of the newer features that we uh, that we use quite a bit now is the AOD drift um, feature. And basically, what it does is turns one point of activation into a small line, and that gives us um, a, a a much faster imaging rate across that. That, um, across that small um, kind of line, which is really helpful for voltage imaging, uh, in which speed is is paramount. We need to image, you know, over a kilohertz, and uh, with the drift imaging, we're able to now look at more more spots than we would otherwise um, uh, using the, using that feature. If you could choose your favorite Femtonic software feature. Which one would it be and why? There's a, uh, there's a window that shows you the, uh, the beam position as it enters the uh, beam conditioning unit. And then when you turn it on, it shows you in real time the adjustments that are made to that beam position. And, and you can watch it in real time center on the, on the target position. And as someone who's spent really too much time in alignment, um, you know, I see that couple of seconds, maybe just a second that it takes for the beam to go into position and, and know that, that what that would mean otherwise is easily in maybe 30 minutes to an hour worth, worth of uh, realignment time. So I, I actually really love seeing that. It's not part of the experiment per se. It isn't, you know, setting up a, a, um, a, an imaging protocol or something like that, but it definitely makes me happy to see that. Why have you decided to work with Femtonics? I like that the um, from the very first time that I started, that I sort of reached out to Femtonics, they were very responsive to my specific experimental needs. And um, they uh, worked with me to make adjustments and customizations to our system to make sure that it would do everything that we needed it to do. Um, you know, they didn't uh, come with a with a boxed system and say, this is what we sell and, you know, these are the things that it can do. And, um, you know, where, where there were needs for, uh, for new aspects of the system, they, that they were able to work with me to get that done. And, um, and they also are willing to incorporate, you know, new designs and to actually put some effort into innovating on the system that they have currently. So if you have a new, um, a new application, the system won't, um, it isn't configured in the right way to get that application completed, um, they'll work with you to help um, uh, affect an engineering change or to, to get a customized feature added to the system, which, you know, I really appreciate that. We're, we're, we bought this imaging system um, and we hope to use it for many years into the future. We don't know exactly where our research is going to lead, though we have a pretty good idea. Um, and so it was important to me to know that whatever 
issues or whatever questions come up in the future that we'd be able to figure out some way um, you know, to optimize uh, this system and to change it accordingly. Seize the opportunity and learn more about how Multiforan systems can advance your research. Contact us at sales-marketing at femtonics.eu.